informed by this history, Kenyans yearned for a stable constitutional system where the power to amend the constitution would not be abused for short-term interest by political elite. The CKRC report records at page 74 that Kenyans express what they wanted, and I quote, there is a need to protect the constitution against indiscriminate amendments. What emerges from the historical account is that there was a strong concern that the country should adopt provisions on amendment power that are able to protect the constitutional order from abusive amendments. But this was not all. There was also a recognition that the constitution must remain flexible in order to adjust to political, social, economic, technological, and other changes that take place in the polity. In effect, the overarching imperative that informed the drafting of chapter 16 was the need to find a proper balance between rigidity and flexibility. The quest for a balance between rigidity and flexibility is evident in the tired amendment provisions in chapter 16, which stipulates three pathways for amending the constitution. The first pathway under Article 256 provides for amendment by parliamentary initiative. This process involves public participation and approval by the Houses of Parliament through a vote of endorsement by two thirds of all members of each house during the second and third reading of the amendment bill. The second pathway under Article 257 provides for amendment by popular initiative. This process involves correction of at least one million signatures from registered voters in support of the popular initiative by the promoters of the initiative. Approval of the initiative by the majority of the county assemblies and passage of the bill by the majority of the members of each house of parliament. In this second process, if either house of parliament fails to pass the bill, the proposed amendment is submitted to the people in a referendum. 